Good day, Richard. I was after Malcolm Roberts. Have I got the right phone number? You have the right phone number, but the senator's in the chamber. Um, uh, That's okay. I just wanted to leave a just wanted to leave a question for him. He posted um, a, a video of a statement he made in Parliament uh, a couple of days ago, talking about the Constitution, how the states can make laws around the Constitution. I wanted to clarify with him Section 107 of the Constitution. I'm assuming, I'm assuming you're familiar with that? No, I'm not. Let me just... If you're prompt, hang on, I'm just going to turn this television off. <laughs> That's right. So Section... Sorry, not 107, 109 I meant to say. Sorry. Sorry, it was section. So this, this, so this is um, part of the entire legal system that we're based upon. How a higher court always holds precedent over a lower court, so forth. And it's section one zero nine of the Constitution provides that when a law of the state is inconsistent with the with the with the Commonwealth. Yes, you're reading that wrong. And and we have had a barrister. Well, All right. I, did you mean 107 or 109? Because you sorry, 109. I know I made a mistake. Sorry, 109. Yeah, okay. sorry. Yeah. The federal government only has primacy over a po policy area that is specifically listed in the Constitution. So the Constitution in 1901, the states got together and split up what you might call portfolios. Wealth was given to the states. The federal government cannot legislate. A, a, the federal government could not legislate to ban a compulsory vaccination um, under its health powers. It would be struck down, and there are numerous high court uh, decisions over the years that has made that clear. There's been uh, 40 high court challenges to to exactly mandatory vaccinations over the years. And they have been resolved on other issues, not 109. Okay. Okay. So what's the defence? What's the defence against making something mandatory, a mandical, a mandatory okay, medical I, I, treatment? Yeah. yeah. Look, this is our, this is our deficiency. We have not put out a clear mm. guidance as to why we're saying this. The. Um, mm. Quadrant Online has an excellent article on the matter, and the Senator has two videos out that go partially to explaining all of this. So we don't have time to go into constitutional debate now. But oh, yeah, absolutely. Look at that little bit, and they say, oh, look, federal legislation trumps state legislation. No, it doesn't. It only trumps state legislation in the areas that the, the uh, Constitution gave as being federal powers. And that does not include health. They are mostly external powers, defence, trade, um, security, those sorts of things. Mm. Um, oddly, transport, because um, the original intention was to have a, a unified national rail grid, which 120 years later we still don't have. <laughs> so the Constitution did not give much to the federal government. Everything that it does, it does by consensus. It's called referred powers. So the state government will say, all right, show us the bill, or show us the powers you right. can use. Yes, all right, we all agree to refer that power to you. And can I say, the state can take back that power in an in a instant, merely by sending a letter to the Prime Minister saying, I withdraw my uh, uh, reserved powers. So if the state, if the federal government were to legislate for no compulsory vaccination, then the states could just pull that referred power and mm. go, no, you know, it, and it would not, and if they, but that's probably all they would need to do is they chose to get, take it to the High Court, the High Court would have to uphold the Constitution. Now, you can pitch it other ways. You can say that this is compulsory conscription, mm. which is another section of the Constitution. Yes. And the High Court did um, strike down compulsory vaccination under that section of the Constitution, but that was 50 years ago. 60, 70, 70 years ago, actually, we have no confidence that if that came up again, they would make that same decision again, because for, uh, our federal structure has progressed a lot since then, and the federal government is now all powerful. So that's mm. not work. But there is, 
that section can't be read to include health, education, uh, housing, um, uh, Aboriginal affairs, a whole pile of stuff that the Constitution specifically gave state governments. Mm. So uh, that's the problem. And the, these armchair uh, uh, lawyers that are reading mm. that going on, the federal government could, could... No, they can't. No, they can't. And now we are preparing legislation that we are trying to use um, a couple of constitutional, um, you know, three and a half points with a twist to try and get, to try and uh, establish that the federal government does have the right to ban federal, sorry, ban mandatory vaccinations. Um, and at the moment we've got a, a barrister, constitutional barrister with 32 years standing going, you know what, this doesn't fly. So until mm. we can find a way to make it fly, we're not going to do it because it's going to be a pointless exercise. Yeah, exactly, so, yeah, and a waste of money as well, yeah. The federal government trumps state, yes, but only in respect of the powers it has and it doesn't have this power. Right, so okay, well, that makes sense. That was something I didn't know. Sorry, I'm not a yeah, lawyer, no, so... No, it's fine. Uh, yeah. it's, it's just really uh, frustrating that people bring up Malcolm and abuse him for not, you know, advocating the exercise of powers that don't exist. Yep. All right. I'll leave it with you. And thank I, you. We are, thank you a lot for filling every, that in. I, I I appreciate it. No worries. We're just showing every legal, okay. every legal constitutional, you know, avenue to try and stop this thing. Uh, but you know what? What is going to stop it? Public opinion. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. If we can get enough people, if we can get enough people to make a stand, we'll be fine. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I saw that. I'm, I'm just wondering whether the workers are going to, get to comply or whether they're going to go on strike. The union is going to, to, to uh, comply. Yes, one of our, our uh, people is on that uh, candidate for that electorate, uh, Nicholas, which is is on the phone. He's talking to the union, talking to SBC and trying to trying to see what we... and the media and see whether we just can't put pressure on them. And as I said, I think the Australian people acting together might well be uh, the solution here rather than spending two or three years having legislation going through the High Court because that's what's going to happen. Yeah. The cases take years. Right? And the minute someone refers it, the government... Well, it's only got to be delayed three years and we'll see the consequences of these of these injections without, yeah. a, you know... So if, <laughs> even if we can delay it a couple of years, we'll know exactly what we're dealing with. If, if, if it goes to the High Court, then the government can keep doing it. They need to apply for an interlocutory... Mm. Sorry, I always say that word slowly. Uh, injunction. Injunction, to, yeah. To prevent the the uh, thing proceeding, um, so as to allow them to maintain the status quo. Uh, those injunctions are always pitched to allow the status quo to continue, not to change something. Mm. So we, they would probably succeed. So by the time this gets out of the court, and even if the court went, yep, yeah, okay, fine. We'd all be we'd legal. all be dead, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate your input. Okay. Bye bye.